Whose house? Our house! We are Brent and you Guys are good for me, so. All right, there's three kinds of professionals right now in our world. There's number one, those that made it to the top of the mountain and are still there. I would define the top of the mountain as, what, 100K a year? So number two, those that want to get to the top, or top of the mountain but haven't got there yet. And number three, those that at one time in their life got to the top of the mountain, made 100K, but for one reason or another fell off. So how many are in category number one? Raise your hand. That is top of the mountain, stayed there, 100 grand a year. Raise your hand. How many people are number two? Never made it to the top of the mountain, but won it so bad. And then number three, made it to the top of the mountain at one time, but slipped off for one reason. All right, good. So what we're gonna talk about is, we're gonna to touch on number one, and I'm gonna show you an example of somebody that's done that, and we're gonna be able to relate to it because it just happened and we've been watching it all week, and that is the Olympics. Then we're gonna cover number two, number two and number three, and we're gonna talk about how to get you there. Everyone like that? Yeah. All right, so if we could, uh, let's, let's play the video and then kill the lights back there. It's only a minute and a half and then we'll uh, carry on. that puts him in the state that he is and allows him to do what he does. So Michael Phelps talked about what he does in the dark and that's what separates him from everybody else. So what he talked about is in the morning, um, he spends time with his newborn, he takes supplements, he eats healthy food, he goes to the gym, he hits cardio, he hits weights, he studies, he develops strategy, he assesses his goals, he does his rehabilitation and he does meditation and deep breathing. So, and can we pass out those sheets? Can we pass them out? At night, Michael Phelps, to get to where he wants to be, he has dinner with the family. He does his second workout. He takes his supplements. He emails his people that he has to email. He does his goals for the next day. He stretches, he reads, he learns, he hones, he sleeps, he rests and he gets prepared for what he has to do ahead. So that is an example. So as we watched him in the Olympics, there was no accident why Michael Phelps dominated again, didn't choke again, delivered the goods again, because he's fully prepared to do what he does. And that is preparation prevents piss poor performance. He's fully prepared to get the job done. So what I wanted to share with you this morning is from everything that I study and read and know and, and have done in my career, I wanted to study with you the 15 keys to reaching the top of the mountain, but more importantly, how to get to the top of the mountain and stay there. Would you like to get there and stay there? Yeah. Yes. Right. Um, so number one is to find your why. We have to have an internal motivation. Something has to drive us, and that why is are we doing it for our kids? Are we doing it for ourselves? Are we doing it for our family? Are we doing it for our church? Are we doing it for 
our, our God and are we doing it for charity? It doesn't matter what your why is. If you don't have a strong enough why, you're not going to be able to deliver. If you wake up every day and you're going through the motions and you don't have it, that passion or something to get you through the tough points, you're never going to get there. So it's, it's, it's so important to define what it is that makes you tick, what, why it is you're getting up in the morning, going to the gym or get putting your pants on and going to work and putting the effort. Number two, the key is to call yourself out. And that is you got to tell anyone that will listen. You got to post it on your uh, social media. You got to get involved with all your friends and you got to tell them what it is you're about to accomplish. You're going to climb the top of the mountain. You're going to get to the promised land. You're going to make a hundred grand a year. You're going to be top three in the dealership. You're going to make it into management and you got to exert that to everybody that'll listen because what's going to happen is those people are going to hold you accountable. Those people are going to, number one, probably want you to fail. Does that make sense? Yes. Because people that live in, a, in an avenue of mediocrity, they don't want to see you achieve your goals. But what you want to do is you want to have that inner drive. So when they say, hey, man, or how are you doing on that 100K a year? You want to be able to deliver. I'm right on track. As a matter of fact, I'm exceeding it. I'm going to get there. Number three, hold yourself responsible and accountable. There's, you know, you can make excuses or you can make money, but you can't make both. Everybody got that? Yep. Honest self-evaluation, massive corrective action. So when you hold yourself responsible and accountable, you look at yourself in the mirror and you say, hey man, I got all the tools I need. I got, I'm just as good as everyone else. J.J. Watt said, someone has to be the best, why not me? So what we got to do is we got an honest self-evaluation. Where are our weakness? We don't have enough energy, get in better shape. We're not working long enough hours, figure out a better schedule. You're not mentally ready, read a book or listen to some motivation or do some training. But more importantly, you got to take massive action. As Grant Cardone taught everybody here, you got to get after it. You got it. It's the power and momentum of doing something and staying on it. Next thing, overcome and eliminate your self-doubt. Every single person in this room at some point in their life, even today, has self-doubt. Can I do it? Can I make it? Can I achieve it? What you gotta remember is every person that accomplished anything in life climbed the hill, fell back, got hit in the head with a two by four, and somebody told them they couldn't make it, they laid in bed and said, I don't know if I can do this. Everybody, we're all human beings. So you got to be able to develop a state of, of a winning state where at any time you could click in on it. And if you want to know what I'm talking about, do some research on Tony Robbins and what he talks about states. Okay. Um, next one, find the right organiza organization to join. Unfortunately, for people that want to do well in life, if you're stuck in a bad place, you're not going to be able to get to where you want to be. You all are blessed. You're working where? Ready. 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 Exactly. So we have the tools. We have the inventory. We have the facility. We have the reputation management. We have the support staff. We have the management team. We have, we have everything. We have the marketing, the advertising. We have everything that you can need. So you've accomplished that goal and congratulations because only a select few people can actually work at Brandon Honda. Next, become obsessed with self-improvement. Your goal is to wake up each morning a better person than the day before. Does not matter that we're getting older each day. What you gotta do is that day before, did you learn something? Did you contribute something? Did you help somebody? Did you listen to somebody? Did you reach out to somebody? Did you eat right? Did you take supplements? Did you drink water? Did you get a workout in? This morning, in the dark, how many people in this, this morning got a workout in or ran on the treadmill or did something productive for your body? Raise your hand. That's what I'm talking about. Wake up a better person than you were the day before. Your talent isn't enough. You have to put in the work. For those that follow Gary Vee or Grant Cardone, they're great on the subject, but I'm good, but I got to put in the work. Every Saturday morning, I'm in a sales meeting delivering to my troops, letting them know what we need to do and how we need to do it. I'm up at 11 o'clock at night answering emails. I'm up at 5.30 in the morning in the gym. 
you got nothing happens for free guys you got the entitlement society is going to have the worst time with what's going on in the world right now because they've never been taught to put in the work they had participation trophies instead of hard work and effort their parents coddled them instead of our parents our baby boomer parents <laughs> or the P our parents as opposed to the baby boomer parents who told us if you didn't win why didn't you win right if you didn't do your best why didn't you do your best we didn't ha get a ribbon or a trophy and everybody patch you and say great job right everybody right. with me on that yes. all right learn to dust yourself off you are going to stumble and fumble you're going to we're human beings there's going to be times that you're on your game there's going to be times that you lose a deal a customer cancels we got a bad start to the month we have five or six deals that have bad credit it doesn't matter dust yourself off get over yourself get out of your humble pie and get back in the game again walk into work put a big smile on your face like Muhammad and say and Hassan and say what today is a new day today is a new new opportunity next develop a strategy and adjust and adapt as necessary Colin Powell has one of my favorite quotes. Colin Powell, great general in our, in our military. He said, no, plan, no battle plan survives first contact with the enemy. No battle plan survives first contact with the enemy. What he meant by that is, no matter how smart or how well read we are and how, how researched we are, there's going to be game plans that we put together and then all of a sudden they're not going to work. The problem with the majority of people is when they don't work, they say, oh well, I tried, they give up, and they, they wallow in their misery. We gotta understand that whether it's working in the internet department or working on the sales floor, coming in earlier, or making 25 phone calls, that power of momentum will keep going, but that, but that strategy that you put forward, guys, it's a changing mechanism. We do it all the time. We try something, it doesn't work. We try something, it works. We do more of what works and less of what doesn't, okay? Um, next one, implement great habits, rituals, and routines. First we make our habits, then our habits make us. You really wanna take a hard look at your rituals, routines, and habits. What is it that you do in the morning? What is it you do at night? Are you eating clean at night? Are you eating past five? Are you drinking alcohol? Are you not getting sleep? Are you spending time on things that aren't gonna be productive? Are you watching Fox News instead of reading something inspirational, right? Are you spending 30 minutes on YouTube reading, looking at videos of motivation or inspiration or learning? But it's your habits, rituals, and routines that make you who you are. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. 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 Take a hard look at that and really see where you're at. Because those habits, rituals, and routines will define where you're going to end up. People that want to lose weight and get in shape, their one desire isn't going to accomplish the goal, right? They got to have the habits, rituals, and routines to get there. They got to put in the work, take the supplements, get in there, do the cardio, do the weight training, and eventually they get to where they want to be. Professionals that want to make 100K, guys, you got to really analyze those rituals and routines that you currently have and say to yourself, honestly, are they going to get me to where I want to be? And then focus on self-discipline. Brian Tracy wrote a book on self-discipline that I must read. And what Brian uh, Tracy said, it's the single most important thing for a professional to focus on because your self-discipline uh, uh, pads your self-image. Your self-image uh, enlightens your self-esteem. So the way we feel about ourselves and our confidence and our, and our motivation and our inner thoughts, are we proud of ourselves? Are we proud of who we are? That self-discipline controls that. When you say, I wanna eat right and I wanna lose weight or I wanna make 20 phone calls or I wanna sell 20 cars a month or I'm gonna come in early and I'm gonna do these things. When you don't do them, it does the opposite. So self-discipline, when you lay out your game plan, guys, you gotta follow that game plan and then what happens, your, your mind and your body will, will benefit from that and take you into a higher direction. Next. Learn to celebrate small successes. <laughs> Biggest problem with professionals is we set a goal, and unless we get to that goal, um, we don't 
we don't allow ourselves to be happy, right? Does that make sense? Yes. If, if, you, got, if you say, I'm going to be happy when I get $20,000 in the bank after my bills are paid, what happens is if you don't allow yourself to be happy all the way to that 20 grand gets in the bank, by the time you get that 20 grand in the bank, you still won't be happy. What you got to learn to do is happily achieve, not achieve to be happy. Happily achieve is each day when you say, I'm going to deliver one car, I'm going to make 20 phone calls, I'm going to earn X amount of dollars a day, I'm going to connect with somebody, I'm going to build a new relationship. At the end of the day, you got to give yourself credit and say, I did it. I did what I said I was going to do. And that celebrate a small success could be walking your dog, could be spending time with your kids, could be out in the backyard playing catch, could be anything that's going to give you a little bit. It could be a massage, could be watching a great movie and rewarding yourself. All right, next, control your self-talk and reprogram your subconscious mind. Your self-talk is what controls what you do. Your self-talk is what the conversations you're having with yourself. When you talk to yourself, your subconscious mind is delivering what you say. If you ask yourself bad questions, you'll get bad answers. Everybody understand that? Yes. Sir. So there's a there's a, a science called NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. How many people are familiar with it? How many people have read any books on NLP? So NLP is the single greatest and, and, and best way to retrain your, your subconscious mind and reprogram it. All right. Um, I'll send out a, uh, a list of the top three NLP books I would suggest. You all know we have audible.com. You get free books, download it. Uh, we reimburse 100%. How many people have taken advantage of that? All right, good. Next one, surround yourself with like-minded people. If, you're, if your spouse or your friends or people aren't on the same level and don't want to accomplish the things that you want to accomplish, your job is to what? Your job is to help them get to a better place. And if you can't help them and they're not a good influence on you and what you're doing, what should you do? Get away from them. Get away yeah. from them. Change your circle. Change, change your circle of friends. You are who you surround yourself with and you got to be very careful of that. And then the last one is don't ever quit. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example of this. Michael Phelps, 22 medals. Michael Phelps went to the Olympics, went to the Sydney Games in 2000. How many medals did Michael Phelps win at the Sydney Games in 2000? Zero. 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 None. Not a one. So what if Michael Phelps would have gave up in 2000 and said, I'm not good enough to be an Olympic swimmer. I'm not good enough to compete. No, what Michael Phelps did is he put in the work in the dark. And what did he wind up doing? The next year, 400 meter freestyle at the 2001 World Aquatics Games, he won his first gold medal. So that's what we're talking about here. So 15 keys to reach the top of the mountain and stay there. I'm here for you. I'll do whatever I can to help you, but you've got to take responsibility for developing a game plan. This sheet that I just gave you, don't take a drawer, put it in it and forget about it and say, that was great, I enjoyed the meeting. Uh, what I want you to do is, we talked about the app on your phone, your note master. Put it in your notes and put your 15 steps, but more importantly, read it every morning, read it every night, and implement as much as you can of that that note. Everybody got that? Yes. Because if you, it's the power of momentum. The moment that you start moving in a place of getting better and better, the better off you're going to be and the higher you're going to achieve. So, uh, I really appreciate spending time with you guys this morning. Uh, you have a unbelievable start to the year. We got a great start to August, and I know we're going to do awesome things today. So I'll leave you with this. Whose house? Our house. We are. Great. Right. Let's go to work. Okay.